Regardless of how much you practice with a metronome or how good you are at it, perfect time comes from subdividing and internal pulse. Subdividing is truly understanding the space in between two beats and everything that can fit in between. Internal pulse is like playing to a metronome in your brain. Doing this well will obviously give you great time, but it also removes the barriers in your creative flow. It unlocks more options for what you can do in space and time, and it makes changing rates on the move clean and effortless. Developing the skill is a bit different than practicing general timing exercises, but getting good at subdividing is kind of a cheat to move levels beyond general timing practice. I'm going to show you how to master these things right now with some exercises and other little tricks. But first, let's talk about strong and weak beat relationships and the spaces in between. These are ratios, and as we step down the rhythmic ladder into smaller notes, the relationships between them stay the same. The only thing that changes is the size of the space. Here's how we can break big beats into smaller beats, and I'm sure a lot of us already know this, but it's important to understand how these relationships between the notes stays consistent no matter what the size of it is. So let's talk about this ladder and these relationships a little bit. The whole note is our first strong Strong beat. Between one whole note and another, we can divide this space in half with a half note. And we can divide this into thirds with half note triplets. Now let's move down the ladder one peg to half notes as our strong beat. If I divide the space in between these two half notes, I get quarter notes. And if I divide it into thirds, I get quarter note triplets. One more step down is quarter notes. Divide that in half, we get eighth notes. Divide it in thirds, we get eighth note triplets. And then one more step down, we have eighth notes as our strong beats. If we divide two eighth notes in half, we get sixteenth notes. If we divide them in thirds, we get sixteenth note triplets. Now when I say that the relationships are the same, and the only thing that changes is the space, I can illustrate that just by changing the tempo. If this is my tempo, I can call this an eighth note, like one, and, two, and. Or I can call it my quarter note, one, two, three, and, four, and, triple it, triple it. Or I can call it my half note, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, triple it, triple it. Or I can call it my whole note, one, one, one. One. You see what I'm saying? So the relationship between the strong beat and the weak beat stays the same. And of course, we can keep going forever. We can cut 16th notes in half into 32nd notes, and we do that often. But subdividing 32nd notes, kind of challenging unless it's really slow. We usually just subdivide 16th notes, and that takes care of the 32nd notes. And I haven't mentioned any oddlets yet, like fivelets or sevenlets. It's important that we know how to do those as well. But we're just going to stop at understanding the spaces in between the notes of these rates and their relationship to the stronger beat, instead of breaking them down like we're going to do duple and triple because it's not often that we need to isolate like the third partial of a 16th note 5 lit. Also, this video is just about timing and not all of the different variations of 16th notes we can fit between two spaces. For now, you can watch my 16th three note video. It covers all the three note variations you can fit in between two notes, so that's a good place to start. Okay, so now let's really get into how we use this knowledge and develop our timing. We're gonna be doing three things with the same grid exercises. Here's a 16th note grid, here's a triplet grid. Learn these as fast as possible so you don't have to be reading them when you're working on your timing. First, we're going to play these accent grids while counting the one out loud. Then we'll play the one and count each partial out loud. Vocalizing these counts is the fastest way to build coordination between our brain and our body with timing. I know a lot of people don't like to do it, but the process is way faster if you just do it. As for the metronome, I'm going to have mine set to just quarter notes. I highly recommend that you start with 16th notes or triplets depending on the grid and then move down from there so you know exactly where these partials are supposed to go. One. Two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, four, one. I almost ran out of breath. Just like anything that we do, start slow. If you skip those steps and go straight to just faster tempos, you're missing out on the foundational development and it's gonna take you even longer to master these concepts. Now with the same exercise, all I'm gonna do is play my skeleton strong beats, which are quarter notes. Then I'm gonna vocalize the accent partials in the grid that we're working on. If this is your first time doing this kind of stuff, you might notice that it's hard, but anything that's worth doing is hard at first until it's easy. Also our 16th note syllables, one, e, and, a. Uh. The and is the eighth note, right? And then the E and the uh are the spaces in between our eighth notes. So yeah, it sounds silly. One, two, three, four. E, 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 and, 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 uh, 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 a uh, one, two, E, E, and, and, uh, a uh, one, two, E, E, and, and, uh, a uh, one, E, and, a uh, one, E, and, a one. Now let's do the same thing with triplets. So because triplets are three notes, when we stop doing the whole measure of each partial and we go down to just doing two each, the time signature is going to change to two. So I'm only going to count to two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, 
one. Same process as before. Start slow, hang out there for a while, slowly bump up the tempo when you're perfect at it. Now part two of this exercise. What syllables do we use for triplets? That is the question, right? Some people say one triplet, some people say one TP, some people say one lale, but I usually say one triplet. So I'm gonna use those. One, two, three, four. Trip, 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 let, 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 let one, two, trip, trip, let, let one, two, trip, trip, let, let one. So there's that, parts one and two of really solidifying our internal pulse and subdividing. Like I said, I recommend starting on a smaller subdivision so you really know where these things are supposed to go. Then we need to start taking things away. So when you saw me do that just now, I was playing with the Met on quarter notes. But what if I put the Met on half notes? Now I have to rely on myself more. So once you start putting the metronome on less beats, like doing gap click, you know, like one measure of quarter notes, one measure of nothing, back to back, that's when we really start developing our internal time because we're not passively relating everything to what we here. We're trying to relate everything to what we feel. Don't skip it. That's how we solidify what we just worked on. Part three is similar to the two things we just did, but now I'm just taking out my 16th notes. So I'm going to count my strong beats again, but then just play the partial that I'm isolating. One, two, three, four. 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 Three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Let's do the same thing with triplets. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. I've done this a lot, so if it's really hard for you to get through this and it looks easy for me to do it, that's because of the time I've spent on it. And it'll be easy for you too. It really comes from understanding the space in between our subdivisions. So we're gonna start blending these things together a little bit and we're gonna start with rate changes. When you're practicing going through all of these, I recommend focusing on your right hand, whichever hand you're starting with. The last thing that you just played is what goes to your right hand. What I mean by that, from quarter notes to eighth notes, I take this rate and I just put it on my right hand. When I go to sixteenth notes, I just take this rate and I put it on my right hand. When I'm playing quarter note triplets, if I put these on my right hand, I have eighth note triplets. If I put these on my right hand, I have 16th note triplets. The relationships are the same, it's just the space that's not. We can have a lot of fun with this blending things together in a lot of different ways. I'm skimming over this a little bit because I already have a whole video about this. Watch this video if you really want to master triple double rate changes. Something that can help with this in context is also knowing how these rates sound on top of each other. Maybe it seems crazy, but this way you won't have to mentally shift gears, you always have everything at your fingertips. One thing to do this is just to memorize how it feels and sounds to play this. So now we're getting into polyrhythmic territory, which I also have a whole video about. So if you really want to explore that concept, it goes really in depth about this. So on the drum set, we want our feet to be able to do what our hands can do. So work through the same exercises with your feet. I recommend keeping your quarter note pulse on your left foot and then going through all the variations with your right foot while also vocalizing on the beat and on the partial. Then we'll put this in context by playing a pretty simple beat. Try to count all the different subdivisions while you're playing. And when you're comfortable, start adding weak beats on your limbs as well. And then I want you to try shifting the feel of the beat to these different partials. Having the feel start on the E, having the feel start on and, start on uh. Try to play all these different rate variations as your fills, or these partials as your fills.
Here's how we can practice subdividing in real life. When I mention this to my students, they often look at me like I'm crazy, but it actually helps. The world we live in is full of constant beats, like an analog clock at school or work, constantly ticking at 60 BPM. You can subdivide that silently on your lap or on your desk or whatever you want to do into all the different subdivisions. Make that second hand sound your half note. So now you have 120 beats per minute and you can practice along to that without making any noise. Or like you're driving your car, you're at a red light, you hit the turn signal, tick, 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 whatever speed your turn signal's at, subdivide that. Try to play along to it like a metronome. Play in between the beats, play triplets over it, play fivelets over it. While you're walking, as long as you're taking consistent steps, you can snap these rates in between your steps. Or just think of them in your head if you don't want to look crazy, but that doesn't usually stop me. So in short, really practice your subdivisions. Be comfortable playing all the duple and triple meters, no matter what the tempo is. In other words, the space in between the two strong beats. So always practice this. It's the most important aspect of time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, leave a comment. If you have any questions about anything I just covered or things you want me to cover, let me know and I will respond to you. Check out the description for links to the exercises we used in this video, as well as links to my website for lessons. My social links are down there and links to my music are down there as well. I have a new single that just came out recently. That's what you're hearing right now. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.